Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe, a channel where I share with you guys my journey as a beginner machinist. And today, we're going to be carrying on from last week's video, and we're going to be starting to replace the bearings on my spindle. So I imagine by the end of today's video, I'll have the spindle all out on the bench, and hopefully in pieces, ready to install the new bearings when they arrive. So stay tuned if you've ever wondered how a spindle comes out or you're in a position where you need to replace the bearings on your spindle, this video might be really helpful for you. So to start off with then, I'm going to start by draining the oil in the head. I'm not entirely sure if that's necessary, but I don't want to get to a point where I drop the spindle out and it also jump, drops out about five or six litres of oil. So just loosening off the sump plug there now. I'm going to try draining the oil into this jug because I've only recently changed the oil in this so I'm probably going to reuse it if I can. With the majority of that oil drained away then I'm going to stick the sump plug back in because we shouldn't need to leave that out. Oh, he says. Ah, there she goes. So with all the oil drained out, we can start to take apart the spindle. And I think I'm going to start by removing the return spring. So being really careful, I'm going to undo this 10 millimeter bolt here. With that off, I'm going to be really careful and I'm going to pull this, being aware that it's probably going to spin. Yep, there it goes. Now, how does this come off? Ah, got it. That was really fiddly. So it's got a sort of coiled metal spring in here and it's got a little cutout which has to sit over this Phillips head bolt. So that was a little bit awkward. So with that removed, I think the next thing I'm going to do is take this bolt out here. 17mm. Voila! And actually I need to take this bolt out as well. So I think that might be everything... I think that's everything I need to remove on this side now. So we're going to head over to the other side and see how much we've got to remove on that side. So before I go any further, I've just extended my spindle to the maximum travel that it's got. And I think the next thing I'm going to do now is just lower the head so the spindle is a lot closer to the table. That way, if anything does drop, it's not got too far to travel before hitting the table. Because if it was to fall from this height now, chances are it would damage either the table or the bottom of the spindle there. So... Thanks to the power of the modification, I can lower this no problems. Eh, no problemo. Well, I think we'll call that it for now. So the next thing we need to do, we need to take apart this handle mechanism. And looking at it, it might be as simple as just removing these two 6mm cap headed Allen bolts. And looking online, this whole mechanism might, if I've done everything right so far, might just slide all the way out. So let's get some let's get six mil and we'll check that out. Ugh. All right, six mil Alan. This is quite interesting actually because we're venturing into the unknown about the milling machine because this is my first time doing a job like this. Ugh. 
So excuse my head in the way. Alright, I think we'll move this DRO cabling out the way. Jesus. Well, I didn't expect that just to come loose that easy. I wonder if this whole thing will pull out now. Oh, it's feeling good. I've got the lock engaged just to hopefully stop that falling. Oh, there we go. Just like that, we're out. Well, we'll take a look at that a little bit later on in case anyone's wanting to see the mechanism inside their quill handle mechanism. So, if possible, I think now the quill should just drop out the bottom. Oh, well, it has dropped. Let's raise the head up a little bit because it's on the base. lower you down there so you can see what's going on so the quill is on the base of the table and now we're raising the head back up and hopefully it should come out in a minute oh god is that enough to get it out well, hey. and we have one quill removed. Right then, we've got our quill out and we've also got the quill handle and fine feed. Before we look at the quill and the bearings involved in that, let's just quickly look at the handle and fine feed just in case any of you were wondering, like I was before this, how this actually works. So, let's start by taking it apart. So with the fine feed, where we're looking in there it's just got a little worm gear which when you spin the handle the worm gear spins but the way I think this is a really intelligent and smart bit of kit is obviously when you turn the handle it goes up and down but on mine it's got this clutch bit here so when the clutch is wound out this gear here is allowed to free spin which means when you spin the fine adjust handle, nothing actually happens with the clutch disengaged because this just spins. But when you wind this in, it locks this onto the shaft, which means when you spin the fine handle adjustment, this actually turns a very minute adjustment compared to if you're cranking down on the main handle. So that's just a little bit on how that works. Let's take a look at the quill. So this is my quill out of my Walker Major GH40 that you've just seen me remove. Down here we've got the spindle bore and that's where I put any MT3 tooling. And up here we've got this castellated shaft which actually acts as the drive shaft to spin this around. And when I'm spinning it by hand I can hear that the bearings are quite noisy in there. Especially this bottom one which is exactly it was the sort of thing I was hearing when the, when the mill was spinning round. So I think I'm going to take this apart and inspect these bearings thoroughly and see how much play or wear we've got in them. So I've got a lock nut here with a tabbed washer under it and hopefully by undoing that I'll be able to tap the end of this shaft all the way down and that will release the inner from the outer part of the spindle. So let's give that a quick go and see how we get on. So with the shaft all loose and the end bearing out of this end, need to get this end out now. So I think this here is a lock ring. And I'm hoping by undoing this I can push the shaft completely out that way. Um. 
Well, that came undone not too bad. Uh, uh, uh. Way, and we got our spindle out now, and this is the bearing that I've been thinking sounds a bit noisy. So it's really hard to know if tapered bearings have got a lot of play in them because where you set preload on them you almost take that bit of play out. But I think I'm going to clean all this shaft up and try knocking that bearing off of the shaft and after that I need to grab the numbers off the bearings and put a little order in at my local bearing supplier. So I'm going to give that a clean up and then once I've done that I'll come back and we'll look at the bearings when they're off the actual shaft. There we have it then guys, the quill is all out and in pieces. So until those new bearings turn up, there's not really much I can do with this other than give it a good clean down. So for anyone that has got this make of mill and thinking that they might need to do this to theirs, the slightly bigger bearing is a 30207 and the slightly small upper one is a 30206. So if you want to order those bearings before you strip it all apart, they're the bearings you need. Me personally, I'm going to go for some SKF bearings just because they're normally pretty good quality and should last as long as this mill does for me personally. So just another little side note before we actually look at the bearing and what I think was wrong with it. These adjustable pin wrenches, I'm quite new to owning a set of these and they are amazing for this job. So if you haven't got a set of these and you are thinking about doing a job like this on a mill, I'd highly recommend getting a set of these. I think I got these from like Amazon for like 10 quid. Um, laser I think the make are, so a fairly good make and that job was so much easier with them. So just a little note there guys. So let's look at the lower bearing, the slightly bigger one and what I think was wrong with it. So when the bearing spins it just feels a little bit notchy, not really that smooth and this one was a lot drier compared to the upper one, almost like this hadn't been greased that much from factory. I'm not too sure if this is something you should be doing regularly on the mill, maybe once every six months, but I personally haven't done that. So maybe it's just the fact that this bearing is a little bit dry and needs packing with some new grease. However, because I've got it apart this much and got this far into it, I don't really think there's any need to pack this and put it all back together. I think I'd prefer to pack a new set of bearings and stick them in there. So, like I said, now it's just a waiting game until the postman turns up with these bearings. Hopefully it should be sometime this week so I can get this all back together ready for next week's video. That about sums up today then. Hope you've enjoyed this video guys. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you next week where hopefully these bearings should arrive. See you then guys.